fifth generation of very popular studio monitors, uh, KRK Rocket. Uh, I asked for all three models, so I've got the whole spread with the 8-inch, 7-inch and 5-inch woofer. And I also borrowed the old 4th uh, generation Rockets 5, so I will check if, they are, if the new are different or maybe better and how. Let's go. I will perform all tests in my home studio, acoustically treated by the Portuguese company Vicoustic. Photos of my studio can also be actually found on their website. After implementation, Using Room EQ Wizard software and a little bit of experimentation, I found that the optimal position for my speakers is actually in the corners of my room. Measurements made using the Sonarworks system and a dedicated microphone confirmed that I am getting completely flat sound response in the lowest regions from 30 Hz to uh, 100 Hz in particular. That is why I will place KRK monitors in the same place for testing purposes. I will use Antelope Audio Discrete 8 mastering interface offering a whooping 130 decibels of dynamics. Let's go! If I remember correctly, the first uh, version of KRK Rockets appeared on the market in the late 90s and uh, you know, just to name a few famous users, Armin Van Buren, Scott Storch, DJ Khalil, uh, my favorite producers, uh, they use KRK brand monitors. And actually the fourth, uh, so the last but one, uh, version generation uh, was a big jump because they introduced the Kevlar Twitter for the first time. Uh, and previously it was only uh, available in the V series, as far as I remember. And also they abandoned uh, traditional tone controls and introduced the DSP with a uh, uh, color display and uh, an EQ with 25 uh, settings. So what's new in the version 5? So what's new in generation 5? To my surprise, in the fifth generation, the color Twitter was abandoned and replaced with a new design of one inch Twitter with a silk dome. This time, the manufacturer argues that this is to ensure even better performance in the range of high mid-tones and phase compliance. So that is why I'm going to listen to the old and new Rockets 5 very, very soon. The second big change is so-called, I'm quoting, optimized housing with a base reflex module on the front, providing better low frequency performance. So looking at the specifications, it's actually quite a change because the frequency range of models 7 and 8 has been extended downward by up to 6 Hz. So this means that the fifth generation monitors should actually offer deeper bass. And the third new thing, in addition to the equalizer with 25 settings, the new series introduces three operating modes, Mix, Create and Focus. So basically it's kind of a special EQ that will accentuate different frequencies depending on the type of work we do. The default mode is of course the neutral mix setting. Let's do the unboxing now. The speakers are powered by separate Class D amplifiers, which ensures dynamics appropriate for professional work and reduce operating temperatures. Well, this is kind of a standard solution. To my surprise, however, Generation 5 features integrated mounting points on the bottom for use with KRK mounting brackets, which is perfect for immersive audio studio installations. You can probably see four points now. What is also new, you're getting two magnetic faceplates for protective grill or no grill flexibility. Basically, grill versions have no noticeable impact on sound, so feel free to use it, especially if you have a cat or a child in your studio. It is very easy to switch them, and I'm going to show you that now. The box also includes acoustic foam wedge to minimize resonance and support angle setup. This is especially useful for the smallest speakers when you put them on your desk, so that the tweeters can aim at your ears and the speakers to be isolated from the desk. So I decided to start with Rocket 8, the biggest model, and actually it doesn't disappoint. The sound is huge, it's big, uh, it's nice and uh, warm. It's kind of, you know, well balanced. I would describe the sound as uh, being dynamic and uh, lively. Uh, it's also quite bright, but in a good way. So let me uh, explain. So actually, when listening to some club music, like my, my favorite, uh, you know, defected uh, house bangers, uh, there is actually the exact amount of bass I wished for. And I wish my 
some of my recordings uh, would sound that good. So this is a good indicative of uh, how neutral they are and how actually nice and punchy they, they can be. The mid-range is uh, clear, uh, it's uh, you know uh, correct, uh, uh, although there is a little bit of tendency to uh, to accentuate they have a little bit of tendency to accentuate the high mid-range or lower treble if you like so this might uh, you know sound a little bit harsh when you listen to like over compressed over hyped pop recordings but good recordings should sound uh, pretty good on those uh, monitors actually so um they also, so they have kind of its own character but uh, when you listen to like space cowboy from jamiroquai uh you hear that warm and uh, kind of a little bit dull or, or, or um, dark uh, mix and it will sound nice and when you listen to drum bass recordings they will sound you know punchy and bright and uh, everything and it's it's the same with uh, jazz you actually will feel and hear those air uh, in the cymbals and uh, in the vocals so yeah so they're pretty well balanced and actually they go a little bit lower than the older model i think by four or six hertz so it's pretty uh pretty big dif difference actually and when i tested it using sine waves uh, uh, i could hear 35 hertz uh, up almost like linear so they go really low uh, they say 32 hertz at 10 uh, decibels roll off but actually I could work with lower frequencies than 40 hertz uh, pretty well so um, they are pretty effective and uh, the bass uh, reflex uh, this, this this whole system is also uh, quiet so if you listen loud to some sine waves you won't hear you know uh, the air trembling or you won't hear the membrane uh, making noise uh, unless you make it like you know out of mind, uh, 11 out of 10, but other than that, it's, it's really, really quiet. So it's well designed and I like it. But the new care case, Rockets have three modes. So I was judging its sound in the linear mode so when the EQ curve is just flat, uh, but there are two other modes. One is called Create and the other is called Focus. So in the Create mode, the bass regions are a little bit accentuated and also the mid-range is a little bit withdrawn. So overall, you're getting a smoother, warmer sound and actually it works quite well when you're producing, when you're making beats, uh, you can uh, feel the, uh, the punch, the pulse a little bit better and you don't have to crank the volume uh, up uh, too much. Uh, it's also nice to listen to music in this mode. However, if I, w when I listen to you know Ben Bomber's electronic music, uh, I could get a feeling that actually that the, the kick was too powerful. And also when you know putting on the Nobody from David Penn, like a house track, I also could feel it just sound a little bit too massive in the creative mode. So for mixing and mastering, uh, the mix mode is the default. And also there is a focus mode. It's kind of weird because it's. Uh, um, uh, it, ac it accentuates uh, uh, mid frequencies and it rolls off uh, the bass almost completely. So I think it's good for voice editing, uh, video editing, uh, and I find it really useful for this uh, particular, uh, you know, kind of work mode. Uh, and it would be really hard to achieve this curve, this EQ curve, just by using the, 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 the simple equalizer. So it's really nice to have, although I would not really use it for music production. So I have just listened to Rocket 7 for a while and uh, I found that they actually sound quite similar to Rocket 8. Uh, and even in the bass region, they also go quite uh, deep. Uh, 40 Hertz is, uh, you know, processed uh, quite effectively by the woofer. And uh, the new bass reflex construction uh, uh, let this monitor play uh, down to 36 Hertz with 10 decibels roll-off. So it's not bad for such a small speaker. It's quite impressive, actually. But I found that the emphasis on the mm, higher mids is a little bit uh, bigger, stronger, so uh, 
Most recordings sounded pretty awesome on those monitors, like lively and clear and stuff, but uh, when, listen, when listening to some dubstep recording or some hard drum and bass or compressed pop music, some of those recordings sounded a little bit on the harsh side for me, so I switched to the create mode and uh, I could instantly feel that the, the bass is a little bit boosted, uh, but overall I prefer this smoother sound. So comparing to the Rocket 8, I find that uh, uh, Rocket 7 has uh, a little bit less power. Uh, the bass is deep, but the precision of this bass, the, the, the speed of the bass is a little bit lower. And also they sound uh, a little bit uh, a little bit stronger in the mid-range, in higher mid-range, so uh, overall I think that Rocket 8 is just a, it's just a little bit better monitor. There's a tiny difference, they sound quite similar, they have the same signature, but I just found the Rocket 8, I just prefer them more. That's me. Well, I just tested Rocket 5 and they sound surprisingly loud and uh, clear. Also, there is, you know, subjectively good bass. Uh, here, placed in the corner, in the perfect environment, they sound really huge. Uh, I listened to Bad Guy, Billie Eilish, and I wouldn't say there is, you know, low end missing uh, when listening. And also, I think my, uh, my neighbors could hear that too. So yeah, so they worked really well. Of course, if you want to, you know, make techno or program some super low 808 uh, basses, well, these monitors are, are, are a little bit uh, too small for that. Uh, but they have a nice smooth signature. I think I prefer it over uh, Rocket 7. Uh, the mid-range sounds nice and uh, percussion stuff uh, sounds quite crispy. Uh, they're quite bright and uh, the stereophony is also very, very good. So really nice monitor, really. I actually borrowed also some old uh, Rocket 5s so I can compare them to the new ones and I placed them close to the wall uh, to simulate kind of home studio recording environment uh, and to reduce the speaker boundary interference response. And the truth is they, st they sound quite similar. Uh, the old ones seem a little bit brighter probably because of this Kevlar uh, Twitter. And the new ones uh, seem to have uh, a more, more silky high end, uh, which I kind of prefer. And also they seem to have just a little bit more uh, mid-range, so they sound a little bit uh, warmer or fuller if you like, but this is a very slight difference. And this experiment also shows that uh, uh, Actually, more important than the difference between those speakers is, the, is my position here and the positioning of those speakers. That's why I put them both on uh, vibro isolators like isopacks and I place them like left, right, left, right and not uh, left, right, right, left. Uh, so to preserve symmetry as far as I can get. Uh, so difference is small. I wouldn't change old rockets to new rockets, uh, but if you're buying new speakers, then probably look uh, at the new ones, <laughs> basically. They're just slightly better, I think. And the sound is a bit, a bit smoother, more musical. And by the way, uh, when I first put new speakers on foams and old speakers without foams, uh, the new sounded better and clearer, so they actually work. But if you really want to make your mid-range sound uh, super clear, uh, get this. Uh, these are ISO Acoustics ISO pack. There's also a mini version. Uh, this is not a sponsor block. I just use them uh, and I absolutely love them. I think they make a bigger difference than slightly better audio interface or definitely more difference than uh, mo more expensive cables. So it's a, it's a good investment anyway. My recommendation choose Rocket 8. Uh, it's such a nice monitor. Uh, it has plenty of power and uh, lots of bass. Uh, the bass is not excessive uh, and it is punchy and fast and there is lots of bass so it goes deep and you can really get good control of your low end if your room is treated a little bit and if you place them uh, right. 
so it has this lively bright sound and uh, overall very very smooth and nice so it's great for electronic music and pop music production and I can recommend it to you. Uh, however, if your room is small, you can consider Rocket 7. They also go almost as low as Rocket 8 and probably you will not use the full power of Rocket 8 in a very small room. However, uh, I have to say that Rocket 7, uh, the bass is not as fast. And also I feel that Rocket 8 are slightly smoother sounding. Overall, it's nicer sounding. Uh, it's just my preference, uh, it's subjective, uh, but I would definitely go with Rocket 8 when choosing between those two. However, if you've got a, you know, if you're just starting out and you want to spend some money on synthesizers, uh, etc., just go with Rocket 5. Uh, it's a well-tested monitor. It's on the market for a very, very long time. Uh, and even though its price has gone up a little bit recently, uh, I still think it's a good value for money. Uh, it got plenty of punch. Uh, it also has this uh, lively, bright sound, exciting sound, and they, can, and they can play really, really loud, you know? So I think you'll be happy with them. So that's just, that's just my recommendation. Okay, if you've got any questions, just write me a comment and I'll try to answer it.